Hello Matrix Live, this is Tib, and today I'm with Graham, um, who is an academic. He's uh, teaching in the philosophy department at Kansas State University, and he directs the Integrated Computer Science Program, which is a, a major uh, for students who want to integrate programming and computer computational thinking into a subject outside of computer science. So if I understood that correctly, it's understanding computers for people who are not computers professionals. Okay. Um, interestingly, you are self-taught as a programmer, um, and you maintain Carnap, which is a software that's widely used uh, in teaching formal logic. Did I get everything right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, the Carnap software is at uh, carnap.io. Uh, anyone wants to check it out. All right. I'll leave a, a link uh, in the description for people who want to check it out. Um, so today, Graham is not here to talk about the major or philosophy, but he's here to talk about Populous. Uh, Populous could very well be the name of a, a strategy game, uh, but it's not. Uh, we're going to talk about Populous Viewer, which exists as part of the Populous project. Can you tell us a bit more about uh, Populous and Populous Viewer? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the name Populous is um, due to my friend David Faraci, who's at the University of Durham. Um, and it's sort of a family of ideas for improving the way that we talk about text and media um, and how we can make those kinds of conversations more transparent and inclusive, how we can keep them anchored in reality, and how we can help people connect with uh, conversations that matter to them. Um, so Populous Viewer is a first effort in that direction. It's a social annotation tool. Uh, and what that means is that it lets a group of people collaboratively mark up a text and have conversations in the margins. Uh, and since it's being built on Matrix, it'll be decentralized, secure, and interoperable uh, from the ground up. Sounds good. Can we have a look at it? Sure. Um, so here's the, uh, the welcome view for, uh, for Populous Viewer, um, and you can see over on the right, we've got a collection of different uh, discussions, and over on the left, we've got a, a collection of uh, collections of discussions. Um, so if you want to access a discussion, you can click through like this, um, and you'll see the PDF rendered here. Uh, if you want to add a highlight, you can just highlight the passage, uh, click to add the annotation and the annotation will pop up over here. Um, and then you can, for example, ask a question. So and then submit it. Um, and uh, everyone will be able to join the discussion by clicking the highlight and then see the conversation that's taking place around that passage. Um, you can use some of uh, Matrix's media support. So we've got support for recording audio and, uh, and video uh, within the, the, uh, the chat, although I think my, my camera is otherwise occupied right now. Um, and also doing things like uploading media um, or files. So you can page through the documents. Uh, we have search functionality. and uh, different types of PDF annotations. So in addition to highlights, you can uh, drop a pin to discuss a particular section of the document. Um, and if you want to, you can also go to a sort of master view of all the different annotations that you've added, um, and then you can search to filter those down here. So within conversations, we have support for Markdown. Uh, and also, support for mathematical invitation for more technical discussions. OK, very cool demo. Um, why did you create Populous Viewer in the first place? Uh, well, I've been talking with David for a while about some of the big picture populist ideas. Um, and after seeing Hummingbird, 
a little while back, it occurred to me that Matrix would be the perfect platform for what we wanted to do. Um, and, you know, personally, starting with Populous Viewer was also a great opportunity to use social annotation more in my teaching. Um, I used it in my classes this fall, and I'm going to be doing that again this spring. Um, and, you know, I get to do fun stuff on the side. I wrote a bot that helps me keep track of student work. Uh, doing things in the Matrix ecosystem is really a lot of a lot of Teaching on Matrix, <laughs> very interesting. Uh, it's interesting too that you mentioned Hummingbird. Uh, my guest uh, last week um, based his work on, on Hummingbird or was heavily inspired by Hummingbird. Um, do you rely on uh, any SDK for, for Populous Viewer or did you do everything from scratch? Uh, no, I built on top of the, uh, the Matrix JS uh, SDK. Um, and you know, one of the great things about developing on Matrix for me has been how quickly you can get a project off the ground using the, the SDK uh, ecosystem that's already grown up around Matrix. So, um, what did you build around the uh, the SDK? Uh, is uh, Populous Viewer something a, a significant project, or is it quite lightweight? Uh, well, it incorporates a, a couple of other uh, sort of uh, upstream libraries. So. Um, on top of using the Matrix JS SDK, um, I'm using uh, Mozilla's PDF JS library for PDF rendering. Um, the the KTech library that's Emily uh, Eisenberg and Sophie Alpert uh, for rendering mathematical equations and notation, um, and uh, CommonMark JS, uh, which is a pretty popular open source project that was also uh, developed by a philosopher, uh, John McFarlane. All right, and from the protocol perspective, if we are diving a bit more in the details, um, how does it work? How does it look? What uh, what sort of model uh, does Populous Viewer use for annotations? Well, um, the way that I've been modeling things, um, when we're having a conversation about the different parts of a document, what we really want to do is have a bunch of different matrix rooms and have them all kind of hang together. So the matrix way to do that is with a space. Um, so we model the conversation by associating each document with a space, and then we represent the different discussions about that document as children of the space. And in order to be more specific about exactly what each room is supposed to be discussing, we can add a little bit of metadata to the M space child events so that those events indicate not only that a room is part of a space, but also, you know, metaphorically, where the room exists within the space. All right. And um, do you use any uh, well, regular rooms, or do you send um, uh, special kind of events, regular message events? Uh, for example, if I'm opening Element or any chat applications, will I see uh, everything Populous Viewer is doing behind the scenes? Uh, so the uh, the chats themselves are actually just ordinary conversations. So hopefully. Uh, if you open up uh, that space in uh, in Element, you'll see a bunch of ordinary matrix rooms that just happen to be conversations about this particular document. All right. And uh, did you update the specification for, for this work? Uh, yeah. So I've got two spec proposals going right now. Um, so MSC 3574 and 3592. Um, 3574 is about how matrix might represent uh, annotations in general, um, and 3592 is the details of annotation for, for PDF documents specifically. Is it relying on another MEC uh, that did not land yet? Uh, let me see. So 3592 depends on 74, and I think 74 depends on extensible events. Uh, so yeah. it's integrated with that, yeah. Mm. All right. Um, so you are doing to upstream everything. Uh, you are working on that MSC. I think you are working with uh, somebody who has an interesting project quite related, but not exactly the same uh, on that MSC. Uh, yeah, that's right. So I'm working with um, with uh, Daniel um, from, uh, from, you can find him on Beyond, uh, Beyond Chat on Matrix. Um, and he's working on a project called Matrix Highlights, which is uh, aiming to bring uh, annotation on Matrix uh, to uh, to web pages, so I'm mainly targeting kind of static documents right now, PDFs in particular, and he's more interested in annotating live web pages. Very cool. Um, we have on on Matrix, so I know Timo is working on uh, making uh, maximized widgets. So 
the goal of maximize widgets is to make more room in the UI to, for, for everything that's non-chat. So it could be a very good application of populist viewer to have your PDF open as the primary focus of the room and a sidebar mm -hmm. with the with the chat. Um, what are the next big things for populist viewer? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that um, that widget idea indicates just how many possible applications and interfaces that you can imagine for different kinds of social annotation. Um, so one thing that's going to be really important is to get the, the foundations right um, for this kind of application. And I'll be really interested to continue to work on the, uh, the spec side of things to make sure that everything is you know, polished and interoperable um, as this part of the matrix ecosystem grows. Um, but for populace specifically in the future, um, I'm interested in going beyond just PDFs, adding support for lots of different media types. So uh, document formats like EPUB, but also things like audiovisual media, sort of marking up a, a podcast or a video um, with discussion of different parts. Um, so that'll be uh, that'll be the the sort of uh, the next set of features that I'll be that I'll be gradually adding. Terrific. I can't wait. Uh, do you have any other plan uh, you'd like to share with us? Any final thoughts? Uh, I have some secret plans, uh, but uh, you should keep your eyes on uh, TWIM in the next few weeks, uh, and hopefully I'll have a, a cool demo for you uh, coming sometime soon. All right. Thanks a lot, Graham, and see you around. All right. Cheers, Matrix Live.